ASP.NET Health Checks feature lets you monitor and report on the health of your web application and its dependencies. Health Checks expose your system's health information over an API. Orchestrators, load balancers, and monitors can use this information to check your app's availability and reliability. In this video, let's learn how to turn on health check information for your ASP.NET applications. We will also see how to create custom health checks, use pre-built health check packages for widely used services and platforms that you can use in your applications today. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my ASP.NET series and is sponsored by AWS. ASP.NET Core offers health checks middleware and libraries for reporting the health of your app infrastructure components. Health checks are exposed by an app as HTTP endpoints. Health checks comes in the useful for various real-time monitoring scenarios. You can use this by container orchestrators and load balancers to check on an app's status. So if the app is unhealthy, the load balancer or the orchestrator can create a new instance or restart the application based on how it's configured. Health checks also provide a way to test an app's dependencies such as databases, external service endpoints, and make sure all of them are up and running. Let's start by setting up a basic health probe, which lets you know if your application is up and running. Here in Rider, I have a simple ASP.NET Core Web API application that has the program.cs. I have updated this to use a database connection string. Right now, this is talking to a RDS instance of a SQL server, which is hosted on AWS Cloud. Now, this could be any database or other external services that your applications use. Now, in this case, it has the weather forecast, looking at a table inside that database and returning data from that database. Now, to enable health checks endpoint, all we need to do is add in the middleware. So if I scroll up right before the app builder, let's inject in the services that's required. So we can use builder.services.had health checks. So this is going to add in the required services for health checks. Now to map this into an API endpoint, once the app is built, we can specify map health checks and specify an endpoint that we need this to be exposed on. So let's specify this as health. So now we have set up a basic probe for our application. So now if I run this application, this is going to launch the default ASP.NET Swagger UI that's wired up for our ASP.NET applications. But we will also have another endpoint which is on the health path on this URL. So if I navigate to health, you can see this returns the status as healthy. So this is a basic health check prop for our application, which simply returns healthy if that application is successfully running and working in the background. Now you can also create custom health checks by implementing the iHealthCheck interface. So you can create a class that implements this interface and return your custom logic that's required for that specific health check. Now this could be also talking to external services and connections if you need. Now in this case, let's copy and paste this sample health check inside provided inside the Microsoft documentation and see this in action. So let's copy this code from here and let's walk through it inside the editor. So let's switch over to Rider and here let's create a new class. Let's call this as sample health check. Now let's paste in the class that we just copied and add in the missing namespaces. So now you can see here that this implements the interface I health check. So all this has is one method, which is the check health async method. Now this passes in the health check context and also passes a cancellation token. Now all this is doing is hard coding the value is healthy is equal to true and it's returning a result inside this. So this returns the health check result dot healthy and also health check result failure in the case the is healthy is false. Now you could write any logic inside here to indicate if your application is running or the dependencies that it talks to is available and up and running. Now to enable this sample health check into our application, we need to come back and register that as well. We can specify dot add check and specify the class that we created. So in this case, that's going to be sample health check. Now we also need to give this a name. So in this case, let's give this as sample. Now, anytime the health check endpoint is going to be run, it's going to hit this sample health check as well. So let's come back here, put a breakpoint and run this again. 
So if I navigate over to my health check endpoint and refresh this, this breakpoint is currently getting hit. Now you can see this healthy is true because it's hard coded, but this could be talking to a connection string or an external service to figure out if that is up and running. So since this is hard coded, you can see this is always going to return the result from healthy and it's going to say the message as a healthy result. However, the middleware abstracts this and just responds back with a healthy status. So it takes in input from this custom health check provider and maps that into the healthy status. So now if I go into the network tab and refresh this again, you can also see the network request that's associated with here. Inside this, you can see that this is returning a 200 OK and returning the text as healthy. Now, in case where we have returning a failure, so let's force drag this into the from result of false and let's return a failure result. Now, in this case, this is going to return a 503 with the status unhealthy. Now, you can see here that the 503 stands for service unavailable, which means the service is down and current unhealthy. Now, if I'm using SQL Server, I could pass in the SQL connection or the connection string into the sample health check and use that to check if the SQL connectivity is available. However, there is a better way. The ASP.NET Core Diagnostics Health Checks provides a wide collection of health check packages for widely used services and platforms. So you can see here inside this, there are lots of packages that's there for various different platforms. Now, in this case, you can see there is for Amazon S3, Secrets Manager, SQS, Azure Tables, Blob Storage, Key Vault. You can also wire up to other things like Cosmos DB, Google Cloud Firestore, and a lot of other services in here. So these are pre-built health checks that's available for you to use. Each of these is deployed as a package. Now, one thing to note is that this is not maintained or managed by Microsoft, but this is an open source library that you can use. So let's see how we can add in the SQL Server check into our application. So since we already have the connection string of our application in here, let's move this code right above our services registration so that we get the connection string, which we can use inside our health checks package. So let's add in a NuGet package to start using the SQL Server health check package. So in this case, all we need to search is health check SQL, and you can see ASP.NET Core health checks dot SQL Server. This is coming from that GitHub repository that we just saw. So let's add this to our project. Once that's added, we can add in a add SQL Server health check. So let's specify the extension method, which is add SQL Server, which requires a connection string. So let's pass in the connection string that we have retrieved above from our connection string configuration. Now this connection string is coming from app settings.json and I have stored it inside the user secrets so that I don't have to check it inside my application code. You can learn more about user secrets in the video linked here and in the descriptions below. Now that I have added the SQL Server connection string, let's run this again and see what is the return result. Now, if I refresh this, you can see both of them are going to return true, which means it is going to return a healthy status. Now, for any reason, if you're not able to connect to the SQL Server, this is going to return a false. So let's simulate one of those reasons by changing the password that we have on this connection string. So let's come back here and let's remove this nine at the end of it and run the application again. Now, when the application is going to try to connect to this SQL Server, it's going to fail. So let's come back, let's run this endpoint. And here you can see this is returning unhealthy as expected. And here, as you can see, it is returning the service unavailable and the text unhealthy. Now, once we fix the connection string or if the connection is back up, this will start turning a healthy result. If we navigate to the GitHub library that we just saw, if we navigate into the source of this, you can see the source code for that package. So if I search for SQL Server, you can see the folder from where that package is getting built. So inside this, we can see that this is the SQL Server health check and this implements the I health check interface. Now in this specific case, this takes in a SQL Server health check options and it uses the connection string inside that to build up a SQL connection and use that to check the health of the SQL Server. So it runs a default query that is getting passed inside this SQL health check options. So if I navigate one level up into this dependency injection, you can see this is where the extension method is written. So the default SQL health query that's used is select one. 
which simply runs a select one and if the connectivity is there, it is going to return back a one. Now you can write any custom queries that you need and pass it as part of the configuration when you wire up this package into our health check packages list. Let's see another example of a package that we can use. So let's say we're using DynamoDB inside our application from AWS. We can add in the DynamoDB health check package. So let's navigate into here, similarly manage NuGet packages and simply search for health check DynamoDB. Now, in this case, we can add the healthchecks.dynamodb package. Let's add this in. And this is going to require a different set of parameters. So in program.cs, after the add SQL server, let's also add the add dynamodb method, which also takes in a list of parameters. But in this case, I'll leave it as blank because it is going to use my default credentials that is passed in through my environment. If you're unsure of how to set up default credentials, if you're working with AWS, you can check out the video linked here. But this could be any other service on Azure, Google Cloud, or any other common services that's available in that list. So let's run this again. Now, since we have fixed the connection string, and I'm also able to connect to DynamoDB because of my local connection, it is going to return a success in this case. So now you can see this is healthy. Now, if I was to edit the credentials of my AWS account inside the AWS config details, that is going to affect this connection. So I'm going to change one of the letters like before in my keys, which is happening on a separate screen so that I don't have to share the key. And let's restart this application so that it picks up the new key that's there in the config, which is going to fail in this specific case to talk with DynamoDB. So now if I refresh this endpoint, you can see that it was returning unhealthy because I changed the key to my AWS account. Now, once I fix that back again, on this hidden terminal that I'm using on the site and restart this application again, it's going to use the new keys, which will again give it access. So once I refresh this again, it's going to return as healthy. Now, this doesn't have to be wrong connection strings at your end, but it could also be that the actual server or the dependency that you're talking to is unavailable. So if, for example, let's say in this RDS example that I'm using for my connection string, if the RDS server connection was down for some reason, so let's simulate that by navigating into the security group and editing the inbound rules by removing the outbound port by removing this port access on this RDS SQL. So let's remove this MS SQL port, which means that it's no longer being exposed on that port. So our application won't be able to talk to it. So now if I come back and refresh this, once those settings reflect on Amazon, this is going to unable to talk to that RDS. So you can see here that it's taking some time and now it has returned a 503. This is because we are not able to connect to SQL. Now, in this case, we are not able to see the exact details and the reasons of this failure. All we are understanding is that it is unhealthy, but we are not sure on why and what is causing this unhealthy to be returned. It could be the SQL server that's down or the DynamoDB or the custom health check that we wrote. In these cases, we can customize the output that is getting returned from this endpoint. So you can see here, you can write a custom response that takes in the health report and writes it into a different format as you require. So let's copy this method that's given inside the documentation and see what that does. So if I come back into the writer, let's stop this. Now, when we we set up the health checks, we can pass in a custom function. So let's paste in this function for now inside here. Let's make sure to import the missing references and let's use this right response when we specify the health check endpoint. So let's specify the new health check options and let's specify the response writer and pass in the new write response method that we just created. So all this is doing is it is formatting it into a JSON format and writing that JSON string into the memory stream. So it's reading the health check report that's getting passed in, which has all the details and the entries, and it has different properties to show the status of that health check. Now you can go through this code, which I'll push into GitHub and see what exactly this is doing, or check the Microsoft documentation as well. Now you can also write custom formatted code as you require from this health check report. Now let's run this again and see what this is returning. So the application has started. So if I navigate into the health check endpoint now, you can see it is going to return a more detailed response. So it's still trying to connect to SQL Server, which is why it is taking a moment 
to return back that response. So depending on the number of services that you're talking to, this can take some time if those services are having a delay in response. The API has responded and in this case you can see here we have much more details. So this says the status is unhealthy but the sample status is healthy. The SQL server is what has returned unhealthy and you can see DynamoDB is also in a healthy state. So if I put a breakpoint inside this code you can see the content of the HTTP health report. Let's refresh this again. Once all the configured health checks have been run, it will hit the right response method. If you look at the health report passed in, you can see the different entries inside this. You can see we have three entries, one for sample, one for SQL Server and the last one for DynamoDB. So if I expand the SQL Server, you can see the report entry inside this. You can also see the duration that it spent to talk for this specific health check. So you can see that spent 40 seconds to talk to SQL Server and it was not able to get it. Now in case of DynamoDB, it didn't have to spend that much time because it was able to successfully connect quickly. So you can see it has probably spent milliseconds in here to connect to establish the connection. Now the time that you need to wait etc are configurable when you register these services. For example in the add SQL server there is a time span timeout that you can pass to specify the maximum time that it should wait. So then we'll get a faster response. Now let's continue this execution and if we were to go back to our security group and add the inbound rules again. So let's add the rule in this case for MS SQL to be exposed. So let's search for MS SQL and let's make it available on any IP and let's save this a rule again which means the RDS instance will be up and running again so let's come back and refresh this so this has now hit the right response immediately because the connection is up and running so if I come back you can see that the SQL server is also now healthy and the overall application status is healthy as well the ASP.NET Core Diagnostics Health Checks NuGet also provides a health check UI that you can build to map some of these health check information. Now, if you want to learn more about how to set up and configure this UI, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a follow-up video on that. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.